Alright, let's get started. Today on First Pass, we'll be discussing a three-way versus battle between the MCRN Doniger from the TV show The Expanse, the BS-75 Galactica from the titular Battlestar Galactica, and the lesser-known IAV Crete from Firefly slash Serenity. One might imagine that each of these ships is probably close in size. I mean, they're the heaviest warships of their respective factions and time periods after all. However, that is not the case. The Galactica coming in at a gargantuan 1,445 meters, and the Doniger coming in at a much more humble 475.5 meters. Now, there is no confirmed length of the Creed class carrier, though through some extrapolation from other ships of known tonnage and dimensions, a highly speculative 850 meters will be used for the purposes of this video. So in reality, this is how they really stack up. Seems a little bit less of a fair matchup now. Okay Battlestar Galactica fans, don't rejoice just yet, because each of these ships actually carry various fighters and ships with them, which will be included in this scenario. We'll be considering a fresh out of the shipyard vessel with a maximum loadout and fighter configuration. This will be true for all vessels for this matchup. From here, we are starting the four-part series examining each ship in technical detail, and reviewing their most likely tactics and strategies. The final episode will showcase the battle itself, with the first three being dedicated to the ships themselves. And now, without further ado... Starting off with the smallest of these competing warships is the MCR and Doniger, the first of the Doniger-class dreadnoughts, and the flagship of the Martian Congressional Republic's Jupiter fleet. As seen in the TV show The Expanse, it is classified as a dreadnought, the ship's primary function is as a heavy missile and railgun platform, which it fulfills with its vast stores of torpedoes and heavy railguns. Along with being a mobile weapons platform, it also functions as a corvette carrier, bringing along a small support fleet of light capital ships. It has a comparatively small size of 475.5 meters in length, and a paltry gross mass of roughly 315,000 tons. Its standard weapons loadout is one that punches quite above its weight class with torpedoes. Given their practically unlimited max range, though speculatively about 1 million kilometers, and equipped with both armor-melting plasma warheads and high-yield nuclear warheads, these are incredibly powerful offensive tools. Perhaps their most dangerous aspect is their sheer speed, which allows them to cross incredibly far distances and bypass basic defenses effectively. Next are the two heavy railguns mounted on the sides of the vessel's prow, firing sizable tungsten slugs at an appreciable percentage of the speed of light. Anything within 1,000 kilometers is either pierced right through or is having a several kiloton explosion blasted into the target. These weapons are extremely powerful and accurate, making any close-range engagement a painful endeavor for enemy vessels. Last are a series of 36 ultra-high accuracy point defense cannons, or PDCs, which are usually the primary form of defense against inbound torpedoes, with speeds in excess of 40 km per second. Suffice to say, any lighter targets and larger ordnance are shredded within its max range of 5 km, providing a very powerful layer of active defense. All weapons are under computer control, thus would be extremely accurate and almost instant in reflexes. Adding to the PDC's Curtain of Precision Steel is a top level of shipyard construction and compartmentalization to withstand multiple hits and keep on fighting. Armor is used extremely sparingly even on frontline warships, thus is incapable of tanking continuous weapons fire for any extended period of time. Weight is a premium, and thus actual armor is centered around the absolute most critical areas, such as engine housings, main reactor, and the CIC. The CIC itself is embedded deep inside the ship with its additional armor, making the safest location in the entire ship. This design feature, in conjunction with a high level of compartmentalization, allows it to keep fighting even if heavily damaged, critical systems notwithstanding. On top of all the physical defenses, the MCR and Doniger also has a powerful suite of jamming equipment, capable of long-range jamming of radar, lidar, and, and radio communications from both itself and its carried support ships. This would make target locks and communications more difficult the closer the enemies get to the ships. Its own targeting systems are extremely powerful, able to obtain a usable target lock on vessels several hundreds of thousands of kilometers away, given its use of radar, lidar, and optical scopes.
Being the smallest vessel, the Donninger's mobility is actually quite varied, with a cruising standard acceleration of 0.3 g, mimicking Mars's gravity, and a short duration tactical acceleration of about 17 to 20 g's. This lends to the fact that there is no inertia cancelling or artificial gravity technology available to the MCR, instead using steroids to combat blackouts. Overall, this would mean the MCR and Donninger would be at the mercy of the faster ships on a strategic level, though it would be able to command engagement distances and hold short-term retreat options once in close quarters combat range. Now that we've exhaustively described the MCR and Doniger herself, we'll now move on to its carried vessel complement. Unlike other sci-fi franchises where space fighters are a thing and considered a staple, the vessels carried by the Doniger are considered very like capital ships themselves, equipped with two Corvette-class fast attack frigates and four Morgan-class patrol destroyers in its vast internal hangar. This will be considered less in-depth if only for the sake of time. The Corvette class is equipped much like the Doniger, though carrying far less of the same general weapons, including 20 store torpedoes fired through two launchers and a smaller grid of 6 PDCs. With a crew of up to 30, the ship is a warship all its own. These two ships are generally used as escorts and patrol ships, which can completely decimate slower, smaller ships, though they can be eventually overwhelmed with sufficiently large numbers. Despite being a larger ship compared to other fighters, it retains its powerful 17-20g tactical acceleration and can flip a full 180 degrees within seconds, matching the lighter craft in agility. Just as the Corvette class is similar to a watered-down Doniger, the Morgan class is a lighter version of the Corvette class herself. This comes from the fact that it also carries the same number of torpedoes launched from two launchers, much like the Corvette. However, it only has two PDCs for defense. This lends the ships to be deployed in groups of two or more to keep full defensive coverage. With four of these vessels along with two Corvette class, a light escort screen would be possible to help supplement the Doniger's own defenses. However, as the greatest weapon any of these vessels carry is very limited in number, i.e. the ultra long-range torpedoes, they would most likely be expended trying to soften up or outright destroy enemy fighter wings at a distance before they get too close and potentially overwhelm their PDC grids. Though it's possible for the escorts to go on the offensive, given the raw numerical disadvantage, it is highly unlikely to be undertaken. Instead, the focus will be on the Doniger to inflict as much offensive damage with its vast stories of hundreds of torpedoes and heavy railguns should the enemy get too close, and the escorts defending against inbound lighter craft and working as one to protect against inbound ordnance. Mobility-wise, the battle group would likely synchronize control to the Doniger. After the long-range bombardment of torpedoes, the ships would be playing cat and mouse using their superior tactical acceleration to stay out of range of enemy vessels and their fighters once they've caught up to it. In the end, it's going to be a fight of attrition as to who can inflict the more serious blow first. And with that, we've thoroughly analyzed the MCR and Doniger and her complement. Next up, we'll be looking into the Creed class carrier. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe for more content. And remember, this was your first pass at the Doniger.